Yeah, hi there. Uh, these comments are for... Uh, I'm not sure exactly who this is. Let me take a look at your comments here. You made a comment on my YouTube channel. You also made a comment at Better TOEFL Scores. And uh, you said this. Uh, I just received my TOEFL IBT scores. I got... Now, if you're watching this, anybody, listen to this. 109 out of 120. Reading, 25. Listening, 26. Speaking, 29. Writing, 29. I know 100 plus is enough for most American universities, so my question for you is, should I spend even more time trying to get an even better score or should I be comfortable with 109 and focus on other parts of my application? I know this question seems kind of silly but I was told that places like Wharton and Berkeley for example require an average of 112. Uh, okay. Uh, let me answer that question. So uh, who told you that is my question that you need 109. I think I have an expression, this is a popular expression in American culture, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you have, oh, here's your name, I didn't see it before, uh, Tadu Faraz. It's not broke, you're brilliant. I mean, you are a native speaker, you're probably smarter than 90% of all the native speakers in the United States. Let's face it, you're a genius. So I don't think you need to worry about the TOEFL at all. If you have a TOEFL book, burn it. If you have any TOEFL pre preparation materials, go to a cliff, toss it off the cliff, watch it disappear into the abyss. Never think about TOEFL again. You do not need to worry about TOEFL at all. Trust me. Forget about it. You're, you're just perfect. Your email is very nicely written, you got very good control of your vocabulary, your grammar, all of those things. Okay, let me go to the Berkeley site and read you some information. Now you've probably read this too, but just check it out. It says at the Berkeley website here, Tadu, it says, um, for purposes of admission, and this is talking I think about graduate study, which is probably even more, a little bit more difficult than the undergraduate requirements. It says that your recent TOEFL score must be 570 for the paper and pencil test, at least 230 for the computer-based test, or at least 68 for the internet-based test. But that's what they say. But then it says this, contact individual academic departments for, for, more, for more information as they may choose to require a higher score. So that's what you're going to do, uh, Tadu, is if you're thinking of going to Berkeley or Wharton, you need to get on the phone or by email and go to the specific department that you would be interested in studying in and ask them what their TOEFL requirement is. And I can't imagine that anybody They'd have to be crazy to turn you away with 109 out of 120. I, I don't understand that, why anybody would even second guess something like that. So, if it, it just doesn't make any sense. But there is one thing about the Berkeley website I looked at that really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Is 570 on the paper-based test is not equivalent to 68. That, to me, doesn't make any sense. If you get 570 on the paper-based test to do, you're, you're probably getting around 80 to 85, I think, on the, uh, the TOEFL IBT. So really 80 or 81 or getting higher than, say, 550 or so is kind of what they're meaning to say here. So I think they might have miswrote what they said. But, but for you, what I'm saying for you is, is you need to get it from the horse's mouth, right? Don't be asking me or anybody else. Go directly to the university that you want to apply for and say, hey, my TOEFL score right now is 109. Uh, is that high enough to get into your university? And I'm sure they're going to say yes. I mean, 
it would be ridiculous to turn you away because you have really, really strong academic skills. I mean, let's face it. You got 29 out of 30 on the speaking. You got 29 out of 30 on the writing. I mean, and they're going to, they're thinking about turning you away? No, no, that doesn't make any sense at all. Now, let me talk to you for a second, though. I want to wish you a congratulations from better TOEFL scores, from my seven step system to pass a TOEFL test. Uh, you are a TOEFL god. A lot of my students would be lovely if, if they could have the chance to have coffee at Starbucks and just talk to you a little bit to get an idea of how you did this. I mean, how does somebody get 29 on both the speaking and the writing sections? Now, if, if, if you would be willing, not that you have to, but if you're interested, uh, to leave some comments at my website. If you want to give some suggestions for some of my users, I will, I will take your information and I will email it to them and let them know. But we would be very interested to learn about you. What TOEFL books did you use? Did you use any internet services? Uh, what's your background in terms of your speaking and your writing, your pronunciation? Where are you from? How did you get to this level? How did you do this? How long did it take? How hard did you have to work? These are all really good questions that we, I, and my students would certainly be interested uh, in hearing from you. But again, I want to wish you a congratulations. My own advice for you is to focus on every part of your life and your applications to your schools and things except for the TOEFL. I would not worry about that at all. Be proud. You did it. You have achieved the highest level of, of academic English proficiency, really, that any international student could ever dream of obtaining. So you did a great job.